Hello designers and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at one of the products called Structural Beams and Columns. So if you are on this page, uh, you can click on read more. Um, so this is the list of sections the model entails. So you'll see it, it consists of IPE, H columns and universal I beams. Right, so let's get started. So if you open the zip file that contains the files that you downloaded, you see there's a material library and a IPT file. So what we want to do is copy these two files in a temporary location and then we're going to load the library onto the model and then save that models on the inventor templates. Right, so if we go to an inventor and we open that IPT, then what we want to do is, uh, I'm just going to close this form, so what we want to do is we want to go to that icon, which is the materials. That little left icon there, uh, we're going to go open existing library. And then you choose that material library that came with your model and go open. So then this is the list of materials that you have for this model. So now your materials is loaded. All you do is you save your model, close it. So I'm just going to say no, mine is already loaded. You can basically take the files and put them in your templates folder. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Back in Inventor, you go to your projects window. Under folder options, you can right click on templates and go edit. We're going to copy this path and open a, a new explorer window. Paste that path in. Okay, so these are your templates for Inventor. I'm just going to say I'm going to create a new folder and call it iLogic Models. Right. We're going to copy the, the two files and paste them in that folder. Okay, and then I'm going to close this off. So now your model is loaded on your templates. So if you go to New in Inventor, and you go and you'll see there's, a, there's that folder we created. Um, so there's your, your model. I'm going to go create. And we can start with the edit. Right, so under the Forms tab, you'll see the first button, Model Parameters. Um, so this opens your master form. Okay, the first thing you'll see is designation. So I'm just going to go and change the designation You'll see there's a window that pops up that says uh, there's an error with uh, holes. Okay, so ignore this. Uh, I'm going to fix this. This is actually not supposed to happen. Um, so I'm just going to fix this. Okay. So the model updated. Um, if you do want to add your own sections, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to close the form. Okay, under your rules tab. Um, you'll see there's one called designation. So right click on that one and edit rule. Okay, so these are the, the control rules to set the sizes of your model. So you can take one statement like that and then copy it and then you can paste it and then just change the sizes and also the uh, driving sizes here as well. Right. You can save and run this. I'm just going to go cancel. Okay. You also need to change the, the list, which is there. So you can just right click on that rule and go edit. These are your designation lists. So you, once again, you can just copy one of them, paste it, and then just change the sizes. Right. You can go save and run for this one as well. I'm going to go cancel. What you have is the material, so you can change the material. Um, if Once again, if you do want to add your own material, I can quickly show how to do that. Um, if you go to your rules tab again, you'll see again under lists, right? Right at the bottom, you'll see there's the material list. So you can just copy one of these again and then copy it. Just rename that. Okay, and then save and run. 
but then you also need to load that material in your library so we're going to go back to the material libraries you can take any one of these materials right click and go duplicate and then rename it so this name has to correspond exactly to the same name that you added to the list right you can just uh, edit that material and you can change the appearances and you can change the physical properties for it right I'm just going to put this back um, okay so and then we get mass so this is just an indication of the mass right under more parameters you get length so you can just change the length I'm just going to make it 1.5 and I can close this window okay so the length changed we have starting end joint and ending end joint so if you don't know where they are um, there are labels on the model um, so this is the starting end joint and that's the ending end joint right so on the starting end you get the first one which is blank so this is just a normal straight cut and then you have the straight joint so the straight joint is when you take one of these beams and you add it to another and then you intend to use a plate, a connecting plate that uh, connects the two beams together. So then you'll see the holes for that plate, right? And then you have a blank angle. So blank angle is just a normal angle cut on this end, right? So you can also change parameters. So you can click on that and then say type one or type two. So type one is one direction, type two is the other direction. So if we just go type 2 and we can change the angle. Okay, so that's how the blank angle works. We have 90 degree cleated. Okay, so this you intend to use angle line cleats to join the beam into another member. So if you go to cleat parameters, you'll see this diagram which shows the actual cleat. So what you can do is you can change the size of the of the angle iron. So let's just make this 50 by 50 by 6. You'll see the holes change, right? And then you have side 1 and side 2, okay? So on the diagram, there's side 1, there's side 2. So what this means, well, let me show you if I go side 2, as you see the hole will just become one hole. Okay, so side one has got two holes, side two has got one hole. It depends on how big your, your, your designation is. But it's, it's just so that your holes never line up on a cleat, otherwise your balls would interfere with each other. Okay, so you can just go and change the size how you see fit. And then we get cleat length. So the length is just a, a recommendation of what this angle line um, should be, right? And then we have dimensions. So these are just uh, uh, read only dimensions. So if you do model this cleat, you can actually use this diagram together with these dimensions. And then that cleat would fit on, on this beam and these holes, right? Okay, and then we have notched. So notched is just a normal standard notch that you can uh, apply. So the notch also has uh, cleats on it. So the first thing is uh, the cleat parameters. So once again, it's that very same form uh, that you can just change your sizes there. And then you get the notch parameters. So the notch uh, refers to what, what member size you intend to join onto. So at this point, it joins on a 120 IPE. Uh, the designation for this one is also 120 now. But let's say you want to go and say, I'm going to connect it to 160 IPE then your notch would update to that 160 IPE, right? And then we have angled notch. So angled notch is uh, also just a notch, but this time you just uh, put it on an angle. So you notice there's no cleats um, ap applicable to angled notches, right? And then that parameter, you can also change type one, change type two. So that's just the orientation of the of the notch and then also the angle 
okay that's the joint types you get right the ending end joint is exactly the same as the starting it's just flipped around um, so that would be just for that side okay then we have intermediate holes so the intermediate holes refers to holes on the web of the beam okay and um, this diagram shows you the different types of configurations you get uh, what's nice about this is you can apply more than one configuration so let's say we want type one you just go and apply type one and then this form uh, you can just change the sizes according to the diagram uh, so let's say we want five of those we want the, the offset to be 200 right so you can see the model updated to those sizes okay and then let's say we also want type 4 okay same story your diagram and then you can just change your your sizes according uh, so let's say we want to change the offset so there's your different configurations right okay so this that's it for the holes and then we have labels so the the labels um, the starting end and the ending end label you can choose to to make it visible or not so you can just switch it on and off we have confirming dimensions for the beam itself so um, this corresponds to this diagram and you can just use this to confirm that your sizes right and that is it for this model I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask on the forum or on the video comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in our next tutorial. As always, please visit our website. You can download iLogic 3D models over there as well as visit the forum uh, where you can ask specific questions and get the answers from the masters.